I'm still going to sing my song. I'm still going to sing my song. Let the trials come on every hand. I'm still going to sing my song. Because he's still king of kings. Because he's still king of kings. Let the trials come on every hand. He's still king. I feel like blessing his name. I feel like blessing his name. Though trials come, You'll come on every hand. hand. I feel like blessing his name. Like Hallelujah. His name is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Though trials come on every hand, his name is Jesus Christ. Come on. And he's still on the throne. Though trials come on every hand, he's still on the throne. And I'm a child of God. And I'm a child of God. Though trials come on every hand, I'm still a child of God. And my God takes care of me. Mm. My God takes care of me. Though trials come on every hand, my God still cares for me. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I don't know how you feel, but I feel. I feel like going on. Glory to God. I'm set for the defense of the gospel. Let's go another round. All right, let's get our Bibles open. Bibles open. We're here studying. I love that song. It says, though trials come. God, God didn't guarantee trials wouldn't come. It's going to come. People are going to test you. Enemy's going to test you. <laughs> Enemy's going to come at you like nobody's business. He's he going to see if your testimony is, is solid. I used to work for uh, United Parcel Service, loading boxes in a truck. And they had a certain way they wanted us to load boxes. You stack them up. They wanted, they wanted to, that, that box, the bo wall, they called it a wall. You put your boxes up, you stack them a certain way. You didn't stack them right on top of each other because they, they fall over. You stack them where one overlaid the other, like bricks. And the supervisors would come into the truck and they would run full speed and knock your boxes. See if the wall would fall over. And if you stacked it right, it wouldn't budge. And if, and if you stacked it wrong, the box would fall over. So they would test your work. And I was so glad, um, it was not me, but a friend of mine, he was working real hard, and the supervisor came in and thought his wall was false. He ran that thing and knocked it. See, I told you not to lock it. And he hit that wall and almost fell backwards. That wall was so tight. Tested it. And then he didn't say nothing. He just got looked embarrassed and walked out the truck. And we just had a good laugh about it. The same way that supervisor will test you in building those walls, Satan's going to test you, see if your faith is real, see what it takes to make you quit. And God's going to allow him to do only so much that you can handle. But at the end of the day, your testimony has to be, okay, dust myself off. That was a good shot. And you, and you look around and say, I feel like going on. <laughs> <laughs> Satan hates it. I feel like going on. Though trials come on every hand, I still feel like I'm in it to win it. I didn't come here to quit. I intend to make it to the finish line. The same she sing a song. I'm going to make this journey. If it costs my life, I'm going to make this journey. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Give God a hand praise for the word. Amen. I know we got a late start today. Come in. We've been talking about getting this roof fixed, and we've had several people to look at it, and we thought we had worked out with somebody to do it, but that's not apparently not going to happen anytime soon, so we got to look at somebody else. But um, in the midst of that, we still got to go on. Amen. We got to go on. No matter w what we're dealing with, we have to go on. And we, we're going we're gonna to sit in this building and praise the Lord. If it ain't but two of us, I think God's more, but we're going to praise him. We're going to give him the glory and the honor that he is due.
and we're going to bless his name in this place. Everybody say amen. Thank God for our online audience. is looking so good this morning. God bless you. Look at them. Amen. Thank God for just you, uh, us being able to employ technology so the saints that can't be here are still here. <laughs> they feel like going on. Amen? Amen. So we're in the word of God today. Uh, before we go forward, we started a discussion um, uh, last week, and we, uh, we never did finish it. Um, I know we're talking about the end times, but there was a question about uh, doubting God and testing God, and we talked about We started talking about that. We really didn't finish it. Um, and so... Um, so here's, and, and I didn't give a chance to give my opinion on the subject. I know we have, uh, have different pastors commenting on this. I know we're straight on it, but I want to give my two cents on it too. So we talked about, uh, and I thank God for my new board. My, <laughs> I put a call out. <laughs> and I got to show you all this. I deliberately did not erase this. When they brought this board at home, my wife and kids marked up on it. So I'm not going to erase that until I have to. Can y'all see that? Can they see this on Zoom? Yeah, it's just, 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 just grace was no, here. We can't read it. Can you read it? Okay. So I put out a call. I said, I need a new board. And uh, that was two weeks ago. And today I'm using my new board. And they, they, they put it. And Julian, where's Julian? Is Julian online? Maybe not. But Julian put this thing together. I, 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 I think, well, I won't name names, but. But they got the board for me, and uh, I, I know Julian labored to put this thing together because this kind of stuff I can't do. I, I can't put. <laughs> yeah, if y'all want, if y'all want pastor to have a breakdown, tell them, give him thirteen screws and fifteen pieces, and tell him to put something together, and, and then come get me, come get me, and bring bring some coffee and donuts, which is to bring me back. But this kind of stuff I can't do, and, and so he put it together for me. I really appreciate it. But um, um, there was a question on the floor, and and it may be already settled. But I want to put my, uh, give me my little bit on it too, because that's a very interesting question. Um, and then we'll go back to the teaching on the end time. Um, okay, I want to where everybody can see it. Can Zoomer see this, David? Can y'all see this? Okay. Well, we do. Okay. All right. So um, can y'all can y'all see it over there? Then I think the Zoomers are not going to be able to read it. David's saying because of the camera quality, but I'll I'll put it up here. Y'all can see it, right? Okay. All right. So, um, testing, PST, testing God, and then doubting God. Two, two totally different things. Okay. When I was 18, or thereabouts, I had a tremendous amount of faith. Still do. So there was a lightning storm, and, and it was lightning like crazy. It wasn't raining so much, it was lightning. Boom, 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 I was standing outside. And I said, you know, I, I would like to go out there and praise God in the middle of all that lightning, because that's my God controlling that lightning, okay? So there were some trees out there, and I went out there and stood in the midst of the trees and just praised God while the lightning was striking, all right, 18. Now, what is, what's that example of faith? <laughs> Or I testing God? I sure went down, God. Okay, let's let's say let's let's agree from the beginning. That's not what you're supposed to do, right? All right. But what was that an example? What that would that be an example of in the in, in the in the vernacular we're using today? Tempting testing God. God. Testing God. I knew that God could keep me in that lightning. Now keep in mind, I was 18, and 18, you, especially as a man, as a, as a male, if I can say it, as a male, 18 year old, you don't make the best decisions <laughs> always. It takes men a little longer to develop. You know, I'm still developing, truth be told, but, uh, but it takes men, <laughs> men a little longer to develop. Uh, but, so, but in my mind, that's a good decision. God controlled that lightning. I have no doubt he can, he can keep me. I'm gonna go out there, and I stood, I stood in the middle of trees, while the lightning, just praise God. God, I just give you glory. Thank you for just, just your hand in nature. Look at this lightning. You know, I just, and I just began to praise God. And, uh, and then I walked back inside. And what the years later, I realized, oh, my goodness. I was, I was testing the Lord. So testing the Lord means doing stuff based on the fact that God can do something and trying to prove to yourself or somebody else that he is God. Just to show 
that he can. Let me give you another example. Hey, Bruce, D, I bless you on this cold day. Come on into the house of the Lord. We had a, we had a, uh, but now God winks at our ignorance. <laughs> Sometimes God, something, you, you help your little child, you know. I remember when Julian was three years old, he was running toward the highway, running toward the street. I went and grabbed him, you know, because he didn't know that there was danger out there. He just running free. And um, now he was 18 running out there. I'm like, Julian, what are you doing? <laughs> I might try to talk to him. I'm like, okay, he must be planning on going in and dodging those cars. I might say, okay, he needs to understand that this ain't going to work out. If he's old enough to understand, you know, I'm not going to run up and grab him like I did like this. I'd be like, what are you doing, man? He's like, I got this figured out. I'm going to hop, you know, whatever. But there's a time when God understands that you're a baby and you don't know any better. And he kept me. So testing God is proving his abilities. We had a preacher to come here, man, of tremendous faith, man, I highly respect. And he says, um, there's a funeral home down there. There's, there's a funeral home around here, a crematorium. And he says, uh, how much faith do we have? I said, we have a lot of faith. I said, we have a lot of faith. He said, why can't we go down there and lay hands on some of them dead folk? I'm like, that's not faith. That's not faith. That's foolishness. Because just because God can raise the dead don't mean he told you to go over there and raise Johnny. Johnny time is done. And Johnny, by the will and plan of God, is standing before God or in heaven or in hell, wherever. And God, unless God sent you to raise Johnny, that's foolishness. I can't go raise the dead just because God can. So my response is this. Okay, let's go up to the roof. God can keep us, right? You jump off first. You jump off first. And if you land safely, I'll jump off, and then we go to the funeral home and raise the dead. But, but once you land, when you get to the top of this roof, this is a tall roof, and jump off, because God keep you on the highest point, jump off, no injury, you, you find you land like this, we go to the funeral home. I'll jump off behind you. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. Well, what's the problem? What's the problem? You want to go to the funeral home, what's the difference? God can keep you, right? And matter of fact, it's easier, I would think, for you to land safely than to go raise the dead. Oh, what's the problem? Well, you got skin in the game now, right? That's the problem. Your health is at risk. Yeah, yeah. Initially, only our reputation is at risk. We go down there laying hand on them dead folks before they call the police and run us out of there. Only our reputation is at risk, right? But now, I'm saying prove it, right? Since you got all this, you can't just say because God can, God will. And so a lot of times we make decisions saying, God, I'm just going to do such and such. I know you can keep it. I'm just going to do such and such. God ain't told you to do that. That's testing the Lord. That's saying, God, you know, I ain't going to pray about it. I know you can keep me. I'm just going to go do it. That's testing the Lord. God operates within the will. That's why Jesus said, if you pray anything, ask according to God's will, it shall be done. A lot of things are not God's will. Can I go back to the example I love to use a lot? Because it makes a lot of sense and it relates to people. You know, I mean, back when I was dating, Back when I was dating, I had more than one person tell me that I was going to be their husband. I, I, I wasn't all that, but, you know, in, 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 in church, there's a shortage of good men. Men have trouble following Christ. Men have trouble following Christ. And I was just a fortunate beneficiary of that shortage, okay? <laughs> fortunate beneficiary. I, I, don't, I don't know if I was even trying to recruit brothers. Y'all just uh, let me handle this. No, but no, I'm joking. All right. So, so because they felt God could, they thought it was faith to say, I know you can do this. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 but God's will is involved and my will is involved, all right? So when you say what God can do, that's fine. But we start acting on something because God can and not see if it's the will of God, you, become to, you, you come to a point where you're testing God. What was wrong with what Jesus told Satan, what Satan told Jesus? He said, you're the son of God. If you're really the son of God, jump off this cliff. Because the Bible says he gave his angels charge over you. Prove who you say you are. I just want you to prove it. What's wrong with that? 
Just prove Jesus could have jumped off with landed safely, right? He's Jesus. He, he's God in the flesh. Satan didn't understand the full revelation, <laughs> but Jesus was God in the flesh. He thought he was dealing with just man. <laughs> That's the cute part. They didn't know. The angels didn't have all the whole story. He thought he was dealing with just man, <laughs> but that was God in man. <laughs> he will give his angels charge over you. What's wrong with that? Jesus said, no, you don't tempt, you don't test the Lord. You don't, because God, you don't test him. Let me give you another example. If you ask me to go pray for somebody, uh, give me a contagious disease, uh, COVID, all right? COVID is very contagious. If you said, Brother Lad, you're a man of faith, yes? Yes, I am. All right, we got a room full of COVID. You believe God can, yes? We got a room full of people with the worst case of COVID, new strand of COVID in here. It's taking them out left and right. Would you please go in there and pray for them? My answer is going to be, unless God leave me different, no. I'm going to stand outside the window. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm going to stand outside because God can hear my prayer right here, just like here in there. I don't have to prove to you that I am a man of God or that God who he is by going, I ain't got nothing to prove to you. I can stand right here and God can heal that whole room, even though 100 miles away, because he's just everywhere at once. He's that kind of God. I ain't got to prove my, I ain't got to prove I am you. Now, if God says, Brother Lad, go on in there and lay hands on everyone, then I'm going. But I got to know it's the Lord. Other than that, I'm not going to test him. I'm not going there just because God, and to prove you I'm a man of God. I'm just going to go in here and show you, uh-uh. Unless God gave me specific instructions. We test God thinking it's faith many times. And God ain't told you that. We try to walk on the water when God ain't told us to walk on that water and we, and we sink. There are times God tells you to stretch out and you do crazy stuff. But you know, I heard the Lord on this. <laughs> I told you my favorite example, one of my favorite examples is when they told me I, that, I, that I, I was out of a job. They came my boss and people were paying me. I had a boss that was over me and I had a group that was paying my contracting uh, fees. And they both told me, the contract said, we out of money, can't pay you no more. And my boss said, they letting you go. He said, they paying you, we, we, we don't pay you, you gotta go. Get your stuff and go. I boxed my stuff up and left. When I got home, the Lord told me I still had a job. <laughs> so the next day, I came in and did something crazy. I started unboxing my stuff. And they saw me box my stuff and take it home one day. My manager saw me come back in the next day and put my stuff back. They thought I lost my mind. But years later, I was still there when he left. I didn't go back and say, God, you God, you're just going to give me. I know you can give me. I'm just going to put my stuff down because you're going to give me this job. That have been testing the Lord. But when the Lord told me, that's still your job. And I understood clearly it was the Lord. I had no issue. Y'all can look all you want and put my little basketball statue right here. I put my little picture right here. I put my, and I'm sitting down and I waited till God told them, <laughs> you got money. And not only that, the two that came against you, the, the, the one over the money and the one that told you you out of job, they gone. <laughs> Give God a hand praise. That faith, faith is acting in obedience with the word of God. The only time I know of in scripture, um, with two times, and Pastor John, you may know some more, Pastor Daryl, uh, Vance, some of y'all ministers that studied, uh, and, and some of, this is a well-educated congregation, biblically, ministers, yeah, some of y'all know it. I can think of two examples in scripture where God told uh, man to test him. Because um, we, don't, we, don't, we don't go prove God. God don't like being tested. You, 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 you ever have parents say, don't try me? We, we, don't, don't try me. Y'all don't even like, you humans, you don't even like being tried. Don't test me. This is what I said. Don't test me on it. How many of them said that to somebody? Don't try me. How many have said that said to them? Don't try me. I said this is the way that is. Don't try me. If you do such and such, don't try. Don't test me on this. And then when you get mad, say, go ahead and try me. <laughs> right? That's when you don't, you don't, you don't do nothing. When they say, try me on this, you don't, that's when you, you, don't, you don't do nothing. Try me on it. I'm such a, such a try me. I'm, 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 most time people say, da, 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 try me. I'm, I'm, if I'm receiving, I'm saying, I ain't about to try this person. Because they, they, they know, all right? We don't even like being tried on our word. So God doesn't like that. Don't test the Lord just because he's God. Don't, 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 don't operate in a way that's out of his will just because he's God. He can handle it. Do what God, especially when it comes to doing crazy stuff. Make sure you're in the will of God. 
Seek it. If you're not sure, do what wisdom compels you to do. I've told the Lord many times, Lord, I, I think you're saying this, but I'm not sure. Until I get clarity, God, I'm, see, I'm honest with the Lord. Until I get clarity, God, I'm just going to do what I think is wise. If this is really you, show me, confirm it. Give me a second, get, confirm it. You know, my, you know I want to be obedient. You know I want to do your will. But I don't know if this is you. Confirm this word, otherwise I'm going to do what wisdom tells me to do. When we operate in faith, Satan is always trying to push us one way or another. One way is to doubt God. He's trying to get you to doubt God. Right? This is most if he can't get you to doubt God, he wants to get you to test God. He wants you out of balance. Either left, doubting God, or to the right, testing. And that's the difference. Take the issue of living holy. Living holy. We're under grace, right? It's a good thing to live holy, right? So that's the balance, living holy. Just trying to do right. Not that I'm perfect. I don't, we don't preach perfection. I know people that preach perfection. I don't know what's wrong with them. They in the flesh. I bet you I, bet you I can prove in 10 minutes that they ain't perfect. I, you ain't perfect. Yes, I am. There you go. I, there you go. There you go right there. But Satan tries to push it to the left. We under grace, so we just carry on like we want to, right? He's pushing it to the left. Now you're in the licentiousness. You're in the like, oh, it's just all good. I can seem like I want to just confess. And then, but the only balance is, is, is I might mess up. Yeah, I might mess up. Every day I got something to repent about in my life. Every day, I, I can't hardly think of a day. I go, like, Lord, I just didn't do good. I just, 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 I thank you for your grace. I wasn't deliberately trying to do it, but I said the wrong thing. They pushed my button. I got mad and I let them know. <laughs> I let them know I'm, I ain't perfected yet. <laughs> With my tongue, I said something, God, I wish I said that different. But she caught me at the wrong time, and it felt good. But I'm repenting. It's not deliberate. I slipped and fell. So, but the balance is living holy, trying to, trying to do right, and, 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 and failing and repenting. The other side is, is, okay, if I can't push you to the left and get you just seeing all you want to, then I'm going to push you to the right. Legalism. Now everything is seen. If you feel guilty when you, when you uh, drink too much Kool-Aid. All that sugar destroyed my body. Body's temple, Lord. I just feel guilty. God, I just repent. And then looking down at others, all that Kool-Aid y'all drinking. <laughs> getting the legalism. Ain't nobody saved but you. <laughs> nobody saved but you. You and Jesus. Y'all the only one that had a perfect walk. So Satan always puts you to the right or left. So I, 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 our job is, is, is these are, these are, in the, in the balance here is believing God, walking in faith. Right in the middle is walk in faith. Bible tells us really walk in two things, walk in faith and walk in love. We're talking about walking in faith today. Walking in love is more important. I can back that up, but I won't today. Walk in faith, walk in love. Y'all may not believe this. This is going to be an argument here. I already know y'all not going to agree with this. You know, it's funny because y'all usually agree with what I say. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach, right? I'm a pastor. Y'all know my walk. I know my life. Y'all usually agree. I already know somebody's going to disagree with this. It's more important in most cases to walk in love than to be right. It's more important for me to walk in love for you toward the issue than to be right about the issue. Because if you know I love you, I can eventually change the way you think about that issue. But to some, being right is right. The way you've been raised is way more important for me to walk in love toward you than to be right about it. Because I can reach you if I love you. We're supposed to walk, but I'm, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not seeking about walking in love. I, got, I don't want to digress. I'm talking about walking in faith. Our job is to walk in faith. And, 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 and hey, Pastor, if you look I have a question Satan, on Zoom. Yes, sir. Question. Got yes, a question sir. on Zoom. Question. question. Who's got a question? Question. Who's got it? Oh, praise Who's the Lord. Got? Can you hear me? Praise me. Yes, yes, Cynthia, I can hear you. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. I have a question about the doubting part. Now, uh -huh. I didn't think, can you explain? I didn't think that we could choose to doubt. I thought doubt was something that's 
presented because of our level of faith. It's not that we don't believe God to be who he is and can do it. We know he can do it. And uh -huh. I, I don't feel like I'm choosing to doubt. I just think my situation sometimes blinds uh -huh. me and it's, it has to do with our personal level of faith, maybe. So can yeah. we choose, are we choosing doubt? Okay, uh, very, very good question. Are you, are you choosing doubt? Okay, very good question. Now, let's, let's uh, she's saying, oh, do we choose to doubt? Is it our level of faith? Do we choose to doubt? Okay, very good question. Excellent question. Let me let me give let me give you um let me give you let me, let me qualify that even further. All right, um, how many know God can heal the sick? Amen. Amen. All right, we know God can heal the sick, right? But how many don't know whether God is gonna heal your particular case? But your question is, I know God can heal the sick, but my sickness right now, I don't know if He's gonna heal this. I don't know if he's going to heal me. I know he can, but I don't know if he will. See my right. difference? I know God can heal me. I know he can, but I don't know if he's going to, if he will. Anybody see the difference? I know God can give me this job. I believe in God for a new job. I want this job right here. I know he can do it, but I don't know if he is going to. Okay. All right. Here's the difference. I know he can. That's faith, right? I don't know if God's going to do this for me. That involves two things. What his will is for me and how closely I can hear him speak. I, I may be at a point in a relationship where I don't know I can't hear the voice of God clearly. There are times in my life when I really walk close to the Lord, I can hear him clearly. But sometimes I get a little fleshly, get a little out of touch. I, I, I'm not sure, so I can't hear him. And doubt is really ignorance, not knowing. I'm at a point where I don't know what the will of God is. I believe he can do it. That's faith. But I can't hear him. That's different than doubt. That's not knowing. The minute you say, I believe God can, that's faith. When you say, I don't know whether God will, that's a complex issue. It's not necessarily doubt. It's knowing about your specific case. I can't hear the Lord clearly. Sometimes it's, it's too much on me. Sometimes so much came to me once, I'm fuzzy just because of circumstances. It's a difference in not knowing the will of God and doubt. Now, if God comes to you and says, I'm going to do this, this is going to happen, and you disbelieve, that's doubt. When you hear the will of God clearly, understand, for example, if you don't believe God can heal sick, that's doubt. If God says to you, when God said to me, that's your job, and I said, now, Lord, that don't make no sense. You know, I ain't going to embarrass myself. That's doubt. I can only doubt if I hear the word of God clearly. When Jesus was doing a healing, and I forget which one it was, but we sing, we sing, we sing, this, we sing the song, the words of the song, Pass Me Not a Gentle Savior, all right? Um, and there's a verse in there that says, help my unbelief. What does it say? Uh, yeah, it says, help my unbelief. Um, um, let's see. Uh, get, get, somebody get words, Pass Me Not a Gentle Savior. There's a verse that help none. That's from the Bible example. Good question. I love this question. Okay, okay, sing, oh, hey, hello, sing it. Can anybody hear hello? Here, here, sing it. The verse, I'm talking about. Um, thank you, Mike. Uh, oh, thank you. Got two mics. I'm with fancy. God's good, okay? Sing it, Mike, sing it. Okay. Let me at thy throne of mercy find a sweet relief kneeling there in deep contrition help my unbelief help my unbelief that comes from an example in the bible where jesus get ready to heal somebody and says do you believe i'm jesus i'm about to heal you do you believe i require faith 
And he says, Lord, I believe. He said, help my unbelief. <laughs> He's like, Lord, I want to believe. Help me get there. And Jesus healed the man. And if any wonderful Savior, he healed me. I, I, I want to get there, God. So Jesus has spoken clearly, had demonstrated himself. And at the time, they said, Lord, I just need, I just need, God, help my unbelief. I'm just struggling here. I know you can. And so my point is this, in the end, doubt is when you know God has spoken and you don't believe it. Or, or, or Satan gets in and say, no, no, Bob, they didn't fire you. They told you that, that you don't have a job. They told you, I mean, don't go in there and make a fool of yourself. Uh, you know, you know, you know, God might have said that God might have missed it a hundred different times. You know, God might have said you're going to look like a fool going there, unpacking your stuff. And they told you not that you don't have a job and you be unpacking yourself. Well, what's wrong with you? You're going to give Christ a bad witness. Going in there, coming to, to, to unpacking and they, they didn't watch you pack up and told you bye. No, I know what God but can says. You, but can you go back and forth, Sorry. though? I mean. Can, yes, sir. Can you so, can you start off believing, and then think go worse from bad to worse, or it takes a long oh, time, and then you start wondering, and then you come back and. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And and keep in mind, keep in mind, uh, and the point I want to make, Patrick, ask a question. Let's deal with it. Uh, and answer is yes. Jordan, I mean, we'll, we'll 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 expand on it in a second. Keep in mind, keep in mind, keep in mind the major divisions here, right? All right. We uh, we understand testing God, which which is you know. Trying to prove God's God, where he stuff he told you. Doubting God is when God has spoken clearly and you know it. And you doubt, right? And we, we have and 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 we will come to Pastor Dale's question, natural, natural lead in. But a lot of times what we think is doubt is not knowing what God has said. We haven't heard him. We're not sure what he's gonna do. So we don't call that, we know God can heal me. We know God can save me. I'm going to operate. We know God can, but but I'm not sure whether God told me He's going to bring me out. I know He can, but I don't know because it, uh, my walk of God is just not. I, I don't know. I, I may not be where I need to be right then, or maybe God's just deliberately not telling me. I don't know what the circumstance. But I haven't heard from the Lord, and and and, and I, I don't mean ignorance in a bad sense. I mean not. That's why I say not knowing, but it's just ignorance. I don't know what. God. So not knowing what God's will is in a given situation is not doubt because you still believe he can fix it. You still believe he can change. You still believe he can give you a job. You just don't know whether the way you're walking and how you've been with the Lord, whether he's going to do it or not. You know, honestly, well, the way I've been walking, I've just been sketchy with the Lord. I don't know if he's going to do this. Don't doubt, sister. She's not experiencing doubt. See? She doesn't know what the Lord has told her. That's her job. She's been walking too far away, couldn't hear him. That's not doubt. That's not knowing. I got to close that gap so I can hear the Lord. And once he tells me that's your job, I can walk in faith. Then the Lord told me. I've got to get to the point where I hear God clearly. And if God hasn't spoken clearly, I believe he can. But I'm not operating in doubt. I'm operating in ignorance. I don't know. And so to come back to everybody get the difference, a lot of times what we call doubt is just not knowing. We believe God can heal me. I know he can. But I don't, but the way I've been cutting up, I don't know whether I'm going to get deliverance right now. Uh, the Bible says, for example, uh, we, Grace and I were having a discussion this morning. Uh, we were talking about different things, and I love being married to a godly woman. wake up talking about scripture. But we were talking about uh, a particular uh, the thing, and we said, well, you know, and the Bible talks about how if you're a husband and you're over your wife and you're not... Um, uh, not dealing with her lovingly, your prayers won't get answered. You know, it, it's just not going to happen. So you're praying, you're praying, but, 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 but it's not happening. There's a bunch of reasons where, why prayers don't get, don't get answered. And, 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 and sometimes we go, well, I'm praying about this. Lord, I want that promotion. I think, well, I ain't, I ain't been treating grace right. I don't know if the Lord going to do this to me or not. I just had words of her and made her feel bad. That's not doubt. That's understanding that I ain't walking right and this might not happen for me. And I need to go back and fix that thing. I need to get where I can hear the Lord say, that's your job. Now I can walk in faith. I can't walk in faith so I heard the Lord. Now, answer Paragel's question. Did not uh, Peter, did not Jesus tell Peter, come. Lord said, Lord said bitch, when Jesus walked on the water, did not Jesus tell Peter, Peter told Jesus, Lord, thanks you really you out there walking on the water. Bid me to come. If that's really you. Now, 
he actually kind of put it, God to, I mean, that was kind of to me a little test that Jesus didn't identify. But I was like, okay, okay, you're a bad man. You know, <laughs> that's you. That, Lord, if that's you, tell me to come. I believe it's you. Jesus allowed that. He said, come. He just stepped out of the water. And the man walked. So, yes, he started off believing. He got there, got to looking around after a few steps. I'm walking on water, y'all. <laughs> this is crazy. He started looking around. It's some water. And looked around the waves and stuff like that. He started to sink. He started to doubt. So, yes, Pastor, excellent question. You can start off believing, get into doubt, and fail. Absolutely. So, uh, this issue of believing God, uh, faith is a big thing to God. And that's why the Bible preaches so much about faith. We go to Hebrew, I mean, without faith is impossible. God wants you to believe. He that come to God must first believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them. You got to believe. God wants you to believe. I love it. I love it. I love it when my children believe in me. I love it when my team believes in me. I love it. When I played basketball, I used to love it, Bruce. They said, Bobby, won't you take the last shot? Oh, I loved it. I didn't always make it, but I made it enough to where they kept letting me shoot that shot. I loved it. Please. It, it, I was like, thank you for trusting that I can get this done. Thank you. Ms. Harper, we want you to make the speech. We want you to ask. We got some appropriation money. We want you to go in there. Doesn't that feel good? God has given us a little taste of what it's like to have people believe in you. See, this is all the money I got, and, and I ain't got, I ain't got, I got to, I got to go away 30 days. I need somebody I know every dollar's gonna be here when I get back. Would you hold it for me? Let you know where I think of you, what I think of you. I, I would let you keep it long. You'll have a slip of 20 in there. <laughs> see, 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 you thought about it. See, see, I said, let me get this wallet back from me. She, she said she actually thought about it. That's why I went and got it back because she, she, she a blessed. I thank God. Thank God for everything. But God has given us, like, for example, I think God give, gave, give, gives us children so we can understand uh, that excitement you get when you do something for your child they're not, they not expecting. When you do something your child didn't know you could do. God gives us a little taste of what he feels like. You his children, and you think something big and hard, and you say, I'm just about to bless my child. They go open that door, and there's going to be a new bicycle there. They didn't even know it was there. And wow, daddy! God gives a little taste of that. God gives a little taste of when kids struggle. Daddy, uh, I've got this problem. I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Give it to daddy. Give it to daddy. Give that to our daddy. I, I tell the story oftentimes of, uh, as we get ready to close this thing down, Oftentimes, my, my, I think it was Julian that had broken a toy and uh, came, Daddy, this thing is all broken. I don't know, can it be fixed? And I just said, this is so easy for me. I said, Son, I fixed it. He said, oh, it's fixed. He got so excited. I'm just so blessed as a dad. I remember my time. Let's stand to our feet. I got I to gotta close this out. Um, I, I, Y'all y'all standing reminds me that toward the end here, so if you don't mind. Um, I, I remember, uh, Cameron, God bless you. Uh, and I remember, um, I remember when, um, when Julian, Julian, you've been the subject of many examples this morning. I started off thanking you for putting this board together, so you got some praise in there too. <laughs> but I remember when, when my, my daughter Robin, she had a toy, and she was probably four, three or four, and Julian would have been, I guess, five or six. Maybe she was three and he was five. And he took a toy from her. He took Robin's toy, wouldn't give it back, because he was stronger than she was. And she came in and said, and she came in crying, Daddy, dude, you took my toy and won't give it back. And you're the Blue Ranger. And, and you, I need to give it. And it turns out that she's been watching Power Rangers. And the Blue Ranger, the Blue Ranger was a bad ranger. When the Blue Ranger showed up, he was like Michael Archangel. When he showed up, the Blue Ranger took care of business. She said, You're the Blue Ranger. And, and I need my toy back. And I said, and I said to myself, Boy, I am the Blue Ranger. I went looking for that boy. I said, Give up back that toy, boy. Right now, tell you sorry. I was the Blue Ranger. I felt good. She, 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 she believed in me. She believed in my ability to do it. And she praised me for being the Blue Ranger. And that combination just made it happen that much quicker. I'm the Blue Ranger, baby. And you fathers, it's not taking care of your kids. Can I add this? You'll never get a chance to be a Blue Ranger. If you got a child, you never take it, never, you, not you'll never get a chance. You, you're driving yourself. I thank God for, maybe I appreciate on Father's Day, the Blue Ranger. But my point is this. She came to me. She believed in me. She made the request. 
I made it happen. She gave me a little praise. I was a Blue Ranger. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't be stopped. The Blue Ranger couldn't be stopped. The Power Rangers. And that is, that is with faith. God gives us children, I think, in so many ways to help us understand how he relates to us. You got to go to God sometimes and say, God, you God. You know, you beyond the Blue Ranger. You, you, you got this. You know, the judge is about to make a decision, but you, 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 the, you the judge of the judges. They about to decide on, on who's hiring, but you the boss of the boss. This ain't the boss of the decision. This is your decision. Promotion according to something might come from you, God. It don't come from the boss. This is, it's in your hands, God. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Who was the king that wrote the letter? I don't know what, we know what to do. They gathered round about, they laid, the enemy laid there. Who was the king? Y'all tell me real quick. Has, was it? I don't think it was. Yeah, the, the, the enemy said, I'm going to do this and this and this to you. I'm going to destroy I'm going I'm to destroy this country. I'm going to take yours and make y'all hostage. And, and the man just laid it out, laid the enemy's letter out before the Lord. He said, now, Lord, we don't know what to do. But this is what the enemy said. But this is your call. God said, I got this. He basically said, God, you the Blue Ranger. <laughs> Here they, who they going? And God said, yeah, I'm the Blue Ranger, but I'm beyond it. I made the Blue Ranger. I got this. You didn't even need to fight in this. I got this. We go to God believing that he will do what he said he's going to do. We believe he can do anything. We know that. We know that. We, we, we're beyond faith on that point. Peter said, I believe in John 6. I believe, but I've come to know. I, we come to know God can do anything. We've seen him work. The question is, will he, in my specific case, do this thing? A lot of times it's not doubt, Sister Smith. It's not understanding what the will of God is, not being able to hear him. I can't doubt God if I know what he said. I, biggest issue is not knowing what the Lord said. Now give God a hand of praise. But we often confuse this doubt. Doubt is not hearing God, not understanding what he said. No, he can. But he hadn't spoken to me in a specific instance. And that's why when God gives you a word, you can walk on it in faith. The only chance you have to doubt is when you hear the word of God clearly. I hope this has added, added some clarity to this issue. A lot of times we, we confuse not knowing the will of God or what the will of God in a certain situation is with doubt. It's not doubt. It's just not knowing what the will of God is. We have to get close enough to God to hear him or have a man of God or a woman of God speak in our life and say, sit down, Bobby. The Lord spoke to me about your situation. I got, some, I got, got to share it with you. Does that make, yeah, that's what I've been praying about. Thank you, brother. I received it. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. I received it. A lot of times, out of his love for you, God will look past where you're walking and give you a word anyway. That's, cause that's kind of father he is. My child is struggling. They need this word. I'm not going to let them mess up on this point. I'm going to give them what they need to know. Now you can walk in faith. Once you heard the word of God clearly, that's when you have an opportunity to doubt. But you also have an opportunity to believe. And that is a choice. Once you hear the word of God clearly, Sister Smith, then you have a choice. Okay, what's the question? Oh, Sister Smith. Oh, you're on, you're on, you're on line. Now you're there. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. All right. Any, other, any other questions? Any other questions? Amen. So we're looking forward to a great service. What time is it? I know we went over time. How bad is it? 11.40. Okay, so we'll start in 10 minutes. Um, I'm sorry? Oh, somebody. I said, uh huh. We were in prayer. Uh -huh. The ladies were in prayer. Uh -huh. And uh, Sister Reverend uh, Ruth was <coughs> having his court date. Okay. And Evangelist Tyler uh -huh. prayed uh -huh. that he would uh, uh, get out and uh, that they would give him six months or something. Uh -huh. And that they were giving everybody 25 years. Okay. <laughs> and then she started praying and she said, Lord, if we pray that. He get out in six months. Now I'm going to other lines and I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> can, 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 can you zoom in here? Can you hear on Zoom? Okay, check. Uh, can you hear me? Check, check story on Zoom. So, what, okay. Uh, back when the, we were going back and forth to court, uh, my son was looking at 25 years. Everybody who had the same charges were looking at 25 years. We sat there and watched the judge say, okay, 20, 21, 25. They had the same charges, and Ray and I looked at each other. I said, <laughs> I said okay, I don't know about this. But uh, they gave, uh, and then it got down to him, they gave, they gave him one, <laughs> one year. And then so we came back to women's prayer, and evangelist Tyler said, we, God, we want six months. <laughs> and I said, 
I don't know nothing. I don't know about that. I didn't say it out loud, but I thought I don't know if they're gonna, you know, we got I don't know if they're gonna do that. But God sent him home in four. <laughs> so so I just I just uh pray God. So I didn't it's like you know, I was said like I was doubting God. I just thought, oh you know, I don't know about that because the situation, you know, looked different. But I know the power of God and I know what God can do. Right, right, right. And I, and I don't doubt his power. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that's a perfect example. God can. God, when, and we pray, we believe God can. Even before I understand what his will is, I know he can. I, God, you are able. See, and it's like the Hebrew boys, right? When they went to the fire, they didn't know whether God was going to deliver them from the fire or not. They didn't know whether they were going to be martyrs. They didn't know they got to sacrifice. I, you know, Isaiah had already been sown in half in a log. And he was a man of God. Died. Believe in God. They didn't know what they, were they going to be the next martyr or not. They said, Lord, we don't know whether you're going to deliver us or not. And told Jesus, but know that God can. <laughs> and, they, and they had a but if not, we still not going to bow. We still going to pray. If not. And God was so pleased. He said, no, if. <laughs> not if not. If. I will. And he, said, he got in the fire first. So they opened up, up. He's walking around in there already waiting on him. <laughs> Took the heat out the fire. Hallelujah. Take the wet out of water. God can do what he want to do. That's why the Bible says if a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even his enemies be at peace with him. We stand and we believe God. And then God manifests his will. And guess what? His will toward us is good. In him his promises toward us a yea. In him his promises are amen. God's will is good toward us. Fear not, little flock. It's a father. It's good pleasure. To give you God. God wants to do for his children. You just be that child. You be that child he wants to do for. Amen. We believe in God. D, would you pray us out and hold the prayer? Pastor, did y'all have anything? Pastor Dale, Pastor John? Not for me. Thank you. Okay. Not for me, Pastor. Beautiful okay. lesson. Thank you. Uh, what time is it now? We went a little extra. 11 44. We'll, we'll say goodbye. Uh, can we start at uh, 11 45? 10 minute break, right? And then we'll start services. Uh, we're going to hear from Mr. Harper today. Amen. <laughs> Sounds just like some of the women would You got what you want. You just lost the <laughs> <laughs> I respect my woman minister. All right. So uh, then, uh, so 10 minutes will start. And thank God for all you cool comedy and young people. God bless y'all. Love your family. God bless you. The effervescent. Curly and uh, so Perla good. and uh, so so the superstar so so yeah. all y'all God bless you. All right, so uh, Tyler's over here. <laughs> so we got thank God for you. Pray God be that we'll start in ten minutes. Uh, shall we bow? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you now in Jesus' name. Lord God, we want to give your name praise, honor, and glory for who you are. God, we thank you that there's none like you, Father. We thank you, God, that we have our own individual history with you, God, of your faithfulness, your mercy, and your grace, God. God, as we leave this service, but not your presence, God, because you've always promised to never leave us nor forsake us, God. We want to go forth in your will and your way, God. Have your way in this service on today. Bless the woman of God that's going to bring forth the word of God on today, God. Open her mouth and you speak through her, Father God, and give us listening ears, Father God, and a receiving heart to see. What does said the Lord on today? Bless those that are online, those that are here in person, and those that are coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so I don't know if they're still on. You wasn't.